Hello everyone. Today I am going to show you how to add audio clips to your buttons very easily for your hovering sounds and your click sounds. This way requires very little programming and is quick and easy to do. So first you want to go to your button, you want to add a component and you want to add the event trigger. And then you want to click the add new event type button and you want to pick pointer enter for your hovering sound and pointer down for your click sound. Now just like when you add a event to the on click, you want to just click the plus symbol in the bottom and it'll bring up kind of the same window that uh, the on click does. But for now we're just going to leave it like that. Then you want to open up your manager script that holds the rest of your button functions. And you're going to need to have an audio source, a hover, and a click. You can get a hover sound and a click sound. You can get these any way you want. I just added them in there as public uh, pass-in variables. You can find them when the game starts up. You can do it any way you want. I just have it there for to be simple. But you want to add two public voids. The first void will be on hover. And the second void will be on click. Now these don't have to be in the manager script. You can make a separate script called play button sounds or thing, something along those lines and add these two functions into that for that you, whenever you need to have button sounds in any of your projects, you can just drag on that one script. But for these, then we just go source, which is my audio source, dot play one shot. And for on hover, we want to play the hover sound. And then on click, it's going to be the same thing, but just changing the hover to click. And that's it. So with these two functions, we want to go back to our button. And we want to pass in our manager, which is on my event system. Go to select the script. We want the manager. And we want the hover for enter. So pointer enter is hovering. And then we want to go manager, click for pointer down, which is clicking on the button. There is a difference. So if we look here, they do have pointer click as well. Pointer click will be if they click anywhere. Pointer down is when they click on the button. So this is the one you want for when you're clicking. And now when we start it up, we get our hovering sound when we pass over it. And it plays only once when we hover over it. And when we click on it, we get a click sound. So it's all up and working. But say we have a button that loads another scene. And we have it have a click sound. So right here I have my on click. Oh, I got to add the, the, the click sound again. So pointer down, add event, pass in the event system manager, on click. So say we have a load next scene button with a click sound. When we go to click it, it gets cut off. So let's go look at our function for that. We have just a simple application load level other scene. So the reason it's going straight past this is that we have nothing telling it to wait for the sound to play. So what we do is we can use a coroutine. So let's make ourselves a coroutine right now. Ir enumerator loading level. And what we want to do is we want to take this and move it into the coroutine. And in the coroutine itself, we want to yield return new wait for seconds. And I'm just going to put one second. But what you would want to do, if you're doing it this way, is in the brackets for wait for seconds, you want to put the length of the sound clip. So you would want to find how, how, how long 
the audio clip is for click and then put that time in there as well as you could bring up the source and go if the source while source is not playing while, while source is playing you know wait till in the frame and when it's not playing then you load the other scene there's many different ways to do it you just want to put some sort of check to make sure that the game will wait until the sound is played and then in our load scene function that the button actually will start we just want to go start coroutine loading level and that right there will make it wait for the sound clip to play so let's try it now it might be a bit too much of a wait because I didn't see how long the clip was. I just put one second, but we'll see. So it was actually pretty close for that one second. But as you've seen, the sound clip played fully in the load of the next scene. But it did look a bit weird when it just sits there after the sound clip is played. It's not doing anything. And what you want to do there is you want to mask it some way with either a screen fade or an animation or just something to happen to keep the user's eyes, you know, away from just looking at a blank screen at that time. But that's all for this tutorial. I hope it helped you a lot. And if you have any questions or if you want to suggest a topic for my next tutorial, just leave a comment down below. Thank you all and have a great day.